Hello everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and this is going to be BGP lesson number one, peering between eBGP neighbors using loopbacks. This is mainly for my Southern California Router Gods group. We meet a couple times a, a month and we go over Cisco certification configuration stuff on GNS3. We meet at a coffee shop and it's free. And if you are interested, you can go to meetup.com slash router gods. So we've got our topology up here, R1 and R2. This is very simple. And we've got ASN100, which contains R1, ASN200, which contains R2. And you can see the IP addresses on the screen. We've got four basic steps here. We have to configure the interfaces. So we've got to configure the loopbacks and the fast Ethernet interfaces with the IP addresses and remember to no shut them. Then we have to get connectivity, which means we have to be able to ping from R1 to the loopback of R2 and vice versa, going back here. And we have to be a little careful in getting connectivity because we cannot use a default route. So we can't use the IP route 0000. So we have to figure something else in getting to the other side. Then we're going to configure BGP itself. It's going to be fairly easy, but there's a couple gotchas. And then finally, we're going to verify that BGP works, basically with the show IP BGP summary command. So with BGP, a lot of you are not going to actually configure BGP in real life. Uh, a minority of folks get up to that level, but it is part of the CCNP exam. CCIE, obviously, and they do talk about it a little bit in CCNA. So one of the main things you have to realize in studying BGP is you're no longer thinking about routers themselves. So unlike RIP and EIGP and OSPF, you were thinking about how to get from router to router. In BGP, you sort of, you don't really throw that out of the window, but you have to think a little bigger. So when we see ASN 200 here, this other company or organization could have thousands of routers in their ASN. But according to BGP, it just sees it as one single entity. So that's kind of the, the mindset you have to think about. Okay, so let's get a move on here. We're going to bring up our routers. I already have my routers up and my putty windows are up. Incidentally, I am running this on my GNS3 Workbench 5.6. If you're interested, you can look at my previous video review of it. Makes things very awesome, very easy to run GNS3. Okay, so we're in R1. Our first step is setting up our interfaces. Just make sure I don't have anything running already. So show interface brief. You can see I've got uh, nothing there. Maybe I should just slightly expand my window here. There you go. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so first I want to set up my loopbacks. So int loopback 0, IP address. And on R1, this is all ones. And it's a slash 32 mask. So that looks pretty good. And we'll, well, it's a loopback interface, so we don't need to no shut it. So that's good. Interface fast 00. Give that an IP address. And 10, 10, 12, 1. And this is a slash 24. And this is definitely going to be no shut. Okay, so our interface on R1 should be good. Let's actually exit out of there. Show IP in VR. And looks like we are good. All right, gonna go over to R2. Conf T, set up our loop back first. Remember, this is a slash 32. Set up our fast Ethernet interface. That's a slash 24 and no shut. Okay, we'll show IP int BR just to verify that everything's working and we should be good. I'm just going to ping the other side. So ping 10, 10, 12, 1. So that's going to be good. All right, so we have connectivity to the other side 
on the fast ethernet link, but we don't have connectivity if we try to ping the loopback. And this should be obvious if we show IP route because we do not have a route to the other side. Okay, so if I'll show IP route just for grins. And you can see there, we just have connected routes. What I'm gonna do is set up a static route, so not a default route, but a static route to get to that loop back. So let's actually start it from R1. I'm gonna move this down for a bit, just so we can sort of see what we're doing here. So for me to get from R1 to the loop back of R2, my next stop is going to be 10, 12, 10, 10, 12, 2 going out fast ethernet zero, zero. So let's set that up. Go conf t. IP route is how we start static and default routes. Do a question mark there. It's asking, where do I want to go? So I want to go to 2.2.2.2. .2 question mark. It's saying what I want the mask to be. So that's a slash 32 mask. Do another question mark. And my next hop, so my next hop is 10, 10, 12, 2. Do a question mark there. And we could end it here if we want to. And we'll go ahead and do that. Now I need to go over to the other side, set the mirror coming back. So it's going to be IP route 1.1.1.1. 255, 255, 255, 255, that's a slash 32. And the next hop on this, if I move my console window over, is going to be 10, 10, 12, 1. All right, we're going to ping 1.1.1.1, and we have a success. So very good, this is very important. A lot of people forget to do this, they just wildly go into the router and start doing router BGP and all that good stuff only to find out that they cannot peer with the other side. Okay, so of course you could show IP route to verify stuff, but we already know it works because we pinged the other side. So now we are done with step number two, get connectivity. Now we need to configure BGP, and it's actually pretty easy. We have a couple steps here. First, we need to set and ASN and start the BGP process. That's step number one. Step number two is define the neighbor. And then step number three is set any extra variables. And in our case, this would be setting our multi-hop. And I'll explain that in a couple minutes when we get to that point. So multi-hop. Okay, so we go over to router one. Go into conf t set an ASN and start the BGP process. So to do that, if you guys remember from router rip and EIGRP and OSPF, you always started that with router rip, you know, the name of the protocol. Here, if we do router question mark, you'll see that BGP is definitely an option there. So it's router BGP question mark. And here we have to put our autonomous system number. And as you can see from the diagram, we have autonomous system number 100. So we're gonna put 100. Now you're probably asking yourself, or you know, maybe you want to ask me, where do we get this ASN? Well, you're going to be assigned this ASN through either your ISP, or you actually applied for it, you paid a little bit of money, and this would obviously mean you're a pretty big company to justify running BGP with your own autonomous system number. So the ASN can be any number from zero to 65,535, and they also have private ASNs, we'll explain that in another video, and the private ASNs start at 65,000, okay? But for our purposes, since we're just practicing, we're gonna do router BGP 100. In some of the other training videos you see on the internet or that you can buy, you'll see a lot of them use 
ASN 65000, the private one. And that's because they don't want you messing up a work routers, you know, if you are happen, you know, happen to practice on your work routers, uh, something you probably should not be doing, but, you know, some people do. Okay, router BGP 100. Now we need to define the neighbor, so it's going to be neighbor. And then this is the IP address of what we want to peer to. And since we're peering with loopbacks, we're peering to that loopback address, it's going to be neighbor 2222. We don't need a mask in there. And then, as you can see, when I hit question mark after that, we have a whole bunch of stuff. But the first thing you want to do is remote AS. And here's where you define the other side's AS number. So the other side is 200, remote AS 200. And now since this is an eBGP neighbor, we're going to have to add another line, neighbor 2222. And if I do a question mark here, you can see, uh, obviously, once again, all these different things. But we have to do a command called eBGP multi-hop, question mark. We could just hit enter here. And what this does is BGP normally between when you're doing eBGP, it has a time to live of one, which means you could only peer from here to here. Well, this doesn't work in our case because we actually want to peer from here, loopback zero of router one to loopback zero of router two. We want to go all the way over there. So it's actually going to be instead of one hop, it's going to be two hops, so it's one, two. So let's give that a shot. EBGP multi-hop of two. And now we'll exit out. And I'm going to verify my neighborship, my BGP stuff by doing show IP BGP summary. And you can see here we are in an active state, which means we are not connecting to the other side. Okay, so it's trying to set up a connection, but it is not working. So now we're going to set up the other side. We're going to go over to R2. And similar commands, conf t, router BGP, and our AS number on router 2 is 200. Going to set up our neighbor. We want to peer with the loopback of router 1, so that's going to be neighbor 1.1.1.1. And that remote AS is going to be 100. Hit enter right there. And we also have to add eBGP neighbor or eBGP multi-hop on this. And we'll put eBGP multi-hop of two. Mix it out of there. And now we basically twiddle our fingers because BGP is extremely slow. You also notice that to set up a peering relationship if I show run here, and we'll get up to the BGP section. Right here, router BGP, no sync. That was added for us. BGP log neighbor changes. That's by default. Neighbor 1.1.1.1, remote AS. Then again, neighbor 1.1.1.1, eBGP multi-hop. All this stuff. We could have other lines here. Sometimes your neighbor statements will have four, five, six lines, maybe even more on very complicated things. So BGP is very anal about configuration. It's also not automatic. It's unlike EIGP or RIP or OSPF where a lot of times you just do a neighbor statement on both sides and the routers find each other. BGP is very explicit. You have to type everything in. And it's and there's a reason for that. If you're operating on the internet, people want to make damn sure that you know what you're doing. Okay, Automatic stuff is not cool. Okay. On router 2, let's uh, show IP BGP summary. Okay, so we see that things are still in active mode. And the reason for that is we forgot one thing. And this is going to be to find the neighbor, set up extra variables like multi-hop. We also need to set up something called update source. And what update source is doing is router one, we need to say that our BGP is coming from loopback zero. 
We also need to do the same thing on router 2. We need to tell router 1 that our BGP signals are coming from loopback 0. Now, why, why do we need to do this? Well, remember, BGP is very anal about configuration. And you have to think of things like on the Internet. Okay, If the settings don't match between you and your ISP, the BGP peering will not form. And, you know, it's good because you don't want anyone to peer with you. You know, just someone setting up a router, bam, you're peering, and now you're going to shove down 300,000 routes. Not a good thing. So since we're peering between the loopbacks, we need to explicitly say that, and that's where the update source comes into play. It basically says, hey, router 1, or hey, router 2, I'm router 1, and I'm trying to connect you through my loopback. And because router 2 is trying to connect back to the loopback, those settings are going to match, and everyone's going to be happy. So let's go back to router 1. We'll start on router 1 first. Conf T, router BGP100, neighbor, 2.2.2.2, and the command update source. And we have to tell it, if we do a question mark there, we could type in the interface name, right? And this is going to be loopback zero. Do a question mark there, and all you can see is I can hit enter. That's the only thing I could do. So I'm saying, hey neighbor, I'm sending you my BGP stuff from my loopback. Enter right there. Go over to router two. Conf T. We're going to do a mirror configuration here. So router BGP 200. Neighbor. 1.1.1.1, update source, loopback 0. Exit out of there. And our neighborship comes up. That was pretty fast. Usually BGP isn't that fast. Show IP BGP summary. And we have a neighbor, 1.1.1.1, AS100. And another way you could know that everything is successful as you see here there's a number here so it's not actually telling you that it's up but if you see a number there whether it be 0 or 5 or whatever you know that they are now exchanging routes and messages sent should be a non-zero number something bigger than 0 four messages sent between the routers so this video was just on getting things to peer between loopbacks with eBGP neighbors in another video we will peer with We'll peer directly, not with loopbacks. We'll also peer with internal BGP neighbors. And, you know, that's pretty difficult. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. And then in other videos, probably three or four lessons down, we're actually going to start popping networks into BGP. Because right now, we're not doing anything with networks. So if I show IP route, we don't have any BGP stuff running in terms of routes right there. And that's because that's a whole different ball game. All right, thank you very much for watching BGP lesson number one.